This guy took an old abandoned lot in his neighborhood of Homewood and turned it into a racetrack for remote controlled cars. And an organization in Pittsburgh turned this bus shelter downtown into the tiniest jazz club in Pittsburgh. A group of fine arts students at Carnegie Mellon turned the rivers into a venue for performing artists. And one very brave guy decided that he wanted to build a zip line from Mount Washington down to Pittsburgh's North Shore, the tallest, fastest zip line in the world. Some crazy ideas. And where do these ideas come from, and who gives people permission to pursue these ideas, these sometimes crazy, sometimes exciting, extremely meaningful ideas? When we're kids, we ask our parents for permission for everything. We ask to be excused from the table, and we ask to go outside and play. But it's not long before we realize we have some agency of our own. We have the ability to push the boundaries a little and to maybe try some things that we haven't been given explicit permission for. Maybe we ride our bike a little further than we were supposed to or wander through the woods a little further than our parents told us we could. My mom's here today, so sorry, Mom, for the times I did that. One of the things we loved to do was build bike ramps. Uh, we would take a piece of scrap wood that we found in the woods, rusty nails sticking out of it, and old cinder blocks, and build ramps to jump our bikes off of. And we keep ratcheting up the steepness of the ramp uh, to see how dangerous we could make it. The steepness of the ramp was sort of a graph of our growing stupidity. <laughs> and we'd crash, and we'd wipe out. But we were testing things. We were testing what we could accomplish, what we could pull off. Now, that wasn't me. I couldn't find a picture of me going off the ramp. Here's a much more uh, calm, less dangerous situation I was in, riding the big wheel down the driveway. But I can report that the boy in the back there has told me he still has a scar from overturning that big wheel in our driveway. But we tried things. We experimented. And we pushed the boundaries. And we, and we learned a lot. We learned, you know, we learned geometry and physics. We learned first aid. We learned storytelling when we had to come home and explain the blood on our knees and the scrapes covering our bodies. But we tried things, and this continues on. Kids do this, and they learn they can take things further and further, uh, hopefully in a good way, but it's always with that sort of peer pressure, that positive, hopefully positive peer pressure to make the ramp a little higher, to wander off a little further, to try something new. Sometimes it's a double dog dare that gets us to finally make the jump. And then, at some point, we grow up, and we head into this world, the world of work. And maybe it's not as bad as this for everybody, but we, we, when we get into the corporate world, or the nonprofit world, or we start our own business, or we're, we stay at home to raise the kids, what really defines our life very quickly becomes rules and procedures and processes, this routine that we're not supposed to stray from too much. If you take a trip, you have to get your manager to approve your expense report. If you want to take the afternoon off, you have to ask permission to do that. If you're a nonprofit and you want to try some crazy new thing, you have to make sure that you're not dipping into your restricted funds. There's a name for it, restricted funds. You can't just do whatever you want. We can't just push the boundaries as much as we used to. And so a few years back, I was working at a government contractor and uh, while government contractors are incredibly important to solving a lot of the world's problems, and, we're, and I'm glad we have them, they live by paperwork and process and rules. And so I was looking for a way to make a change, have an impact, have an impact on the community around me and the people around me. There were so many good ideas out there, and I wanted to be part of that, and I wanted to help them happen. And a great friend of mine who also worked at that government contractor and I um, heard about this program called the Awesome Foundation in Boston. It was a group of friends who got together and said, we want to get money into the hands of people with awesome ideas. And we acknowledge that they're not getting this money. They're going to foundations and they're not getting the grants, partially because they only needed a little bit of money, and foundations are really good at the big dollars. But foundations, and we need them, and we're happy that they're solving these big problems they still live by paperwork and process and rules. And so they started this foundation to try to get small amounts of money into the hands of people who had these great ideas. So we loved this idea, and we would, uh, to, to sort of break out of the, the, this office environment, 
we would book time on our calendars to go to um, the external conference room. The external conference room was a bar in the south side of Pittsburgh. <laughs> and we would hatch our schemes. We would try to figure out what we could do. And that's where Awesome Pittsburgh was born. We had this idea that we could help other people realize their ideas, take their ideas to the next level. We could help people turn their ideas into action. And it was extremely, right away we knew this was the right thing to do. This, we had the energy around this. We recruited a bunch of people, not our friends, not the people who looked like us and worked with us, but people throughout the community who were doing great work, who came from different backgrounds, and got them together and said, let's all find the great ideas in Pittsburgh and make them happen. Basically what happens is each month we get together and put $100 into a hat. We get 30 to 40 proposals. We pick one. That may be the hardest part is picking one great idea because, as you know, in this city, there's no shortage of awesome ideas. And we, we, give that, we pick one and we give them $1,000. I want to talk through some of these. And keep in mind that when we pick these, we're really looking for something different. We're looking for something that we get excited about. Maybe most importantly, we're looking for something that might not happen if it weren't for this $1,000. So I mentioned the art students who built the floating venue on for the, for the rivers, turning the rivers into a stage for different types of artists, musicians and comedians and performance artists. Um, they created, this is the iceberg that, was, that first appeared on the drift. The drift has now, because they've raised additional money, has been able to uh, give that stage to 50 different artists in the past few years. I talked about Martin, who loved racing remote control cars. He found an old abandoned lot in Pittsburgh's Homewood neighborhood, and it wasn't his lot. I'm not sure he went to anybody to find out if he could use the lot, <laughs> but he knew that it was the perfect size. Nobody was using it. It was filled with junk. There were tires and old pipes and things just laying around there. So he cleaned it up, used the items he found, and turned it into a racetrack. And invited the kids in the community to come race cars as well. So he turned it into almost a community center for, for the neighborhood. Wi-Fi is increasingly becoming a barrier to people who don't have access. If you don't have access to the internet, you don't have access to the resources that so many of us have, whether we're looking for jobs or whether we're trying to learn something new or we're trying to connect with people who can help us get to where we need to go. And so MetaMesh, built Wi-Fi nodes, nodes that you can set up on top of tall buildings and connect to a decentralized internet network, basically allowing anyone to connect into this network that's not owned by any single entity, that's not centralized, there's no single point of failure. Everybody can connect to the internet through this, through this project, through this program. Since, since the original Austin Pittsburgh grant, they have been able to extend connectivity to Allentown's neighborhood and the South Side and Braddock. And they continue to expand. And they continue to enable other people to expand and build onto this network. A, few, a couple of pediatricians in Pittsburgh's Hilltop neighborhood noticed that when they would have kids come in for well child visits, a lot of the kids were, came in with infections in their mouth. And they finally realized that this was because they weren't getting dental care. They didn't have access to dentists. And so they proposed this idea of using the $1,000 from Austin Pittsburgh to buy fluoride treatments that they could give to the kids whenever they came in for just a regular pediatric visit. The health insurance industry doesn't pay for this. So they couldn't just do this on their own. They needed someone to say, this is a great idea. Here's some money to do it. They used our money to get started. And then they talked about it on the radio. And a pediatrician in another part of Pennsylvania heard it, loved the idea, and gave them an additional $5,000. So they were able to actually give fluoride treatments to 3,000 kids in these neighborhoods. And they continue to do it now. They continue to find ways to make this happen. And the jazz, the jazz club downtown. So Manchester Craftsman's Guild has a great jazz program. They've won lots of Grammy Awards. They've brought some of the best jazz artists in the country to Pittsburgh and have helped provide a stage for some of the best jazz artists in Pittsburgh. And they have a budget, they have a marketing budget, but they proposed this idea that really didn't fit into their normal marketing plan, which was to turn a bus shelter in Pittsburgh into a jazz club, pipe music into it, show images of some of Pittsburgh's jazz greats or some of the great jazz musicians that have come through Pittsburgh. 
Uh, and we loved this idea. And we loved it because it was something that they wouldn't have done if it weren't for the Austin Pittsburgh grant. It was something that they did just because they heard of a mechanism to, to do something outside of their normal process. And this gets us to the crazy zip line, the zip line from Mount Washington to the North Shore. I don't have a picture of it because it hasn't been built. And I can tell you part of why. The $1,000, if you do the math in your head real quick, probably isn't enough to build a zip line from Mount Washington down to the North Shore. <laughs> and in fact, when, they, when the guy who proposed this research did, it turns out it was probably about $30 million. So $1,000 was just that first uh, drop in the bucket. But what he proposed using it for, acknowledging that he couldn't do it for $1,000, was to use it for a risk assessment study. Is there anything more awesome than a risk assessment study? <laughs> but that's not what we saw when we read the proposal. We saw something that, number one, if it happened, we really want to be part of it. And if it wasn't going to happen without us paying for that risk assessment study, then that would, be, that would be a terrible outcome. We really needed to make sure this happened. So it wasn't paying for the risk assessment. It was paying to tell this guy that your idea, it is a little crazy, but we believe in it. We want to see it happen. We want to be part of making it happen. We want to help you get over those hurdles to make it happen. It still hasn't happened yet. We're still hopeful. But with Austin Pittsburgh, there's no strings attached when we give you the $1,000. We don't check up on you. You don't have to file a report to tell us what you did with the money. Uh, and so we purposely haven't bothered Adam again and again to find out where he is. But if anybody sees him, please ask and encourage him to keep going. <laughs> Every month we give $1,000 to people. And we've given 50 awards so far, 50 grants. We funded 50 ideas like this. And some of them are things that make the city better. They help people. They, they make a change. And some of them are just crazy ideas that we want to see happen that will make Pittsburgh more awesome, make the country more awesome, make our neighborhoods more awesome. At the end of the day, though, it's not really the money, I think, that makes the difference. We want that $1,000 to count, and we look for projects where it does, but a lot of these projects may have happened anyway. A lot of the projects we funded may have happened, and in fact, a lot of the projects we haven't funded have gone on to happen. One teacher who put in a grant request and didn't get funded told me later that just the act of writing it out made him feel like it was real and it was doable and he applied for a different grant, a STEAM grant from an education organization in Pittsburgh and he got the grant and was able to make the idea happen. And while Austin Pittsburgh shouldn't get too much credit for that, he does say that, that this little push made it happen. And that's what we want this to be. We want it to be the spark, that little push, the difference between an idea and action. We want to give people space to try the thing that maybe the companies can't it doesn't align with the company's strategic plan or the nonprofit's goals or even their own day-to-day -day job. We want to give them that space, and the money is part of that. But mostly it's the, the belief, that push, that we like your idea, the permission to try it. That's what we want to be able to give people. And it isn't about the money. It's really about the people. Part of what makes Austin Pittsburgh great is that we've been able to get People from all over Pittsburgh, from different backgrounds and different occupations, from different social networks. Bill Jennerette just a, earlier this week said, push past your tribe. I think it's great advice. Look outside of the networks you're in to find the people with great ideas. And that's a big part of why we've been able to accomplish what we've done. All of these people were trustees of Austin Pittsburgh and helped connect us with the great ideas that are out there and helped choose the great ideas we would then go on to fund. And more than anything, I'm grateful for knowing these people because we continue to be friends. We continue to look for opportunities to work together. We look for idea, ideas that are out there and find ways to make them happen. I should also include our Dean of Awesome and our Ambassador of Awesome. So the great thing about all this is you don't have to be part of Awesome Pittsburgh to make ideas happen. You don't have to be a trustee. You don't even have to put money into it. You can put money into it, and there's lots of ways to do that. There's crowdfunding. If your friends have a crowdfunding project and you donate to it, you're giving them permission to pursue that idea. It's a vote of confidence that this idea could work, and you'd love to see it happen. But it doesn't have to be money. It can be encouragement. It can be you, it can be you uh, connecting people with others who can make their ideas happen. Just that simple act of saying, I know someone who would love this idea and might be able to help. 
That's a vote of confidence. That's you saying, I like this idea so much. I want to connect you with someone who will make it happen. I want to see it happen. If, you're, if you have a company or an organization that you run, you can make space for these ideas. I helped organize a, uh, a code fest recently, a hackathon, to solve civic problems in Pittsburgh. And in past years, we've had teams that came from different companies. You know, a bunch of friends would say, hey, let's participate in this. This year, something different happened. Some of the companies they worked for said, we're going to let you work on this while you're here at work. We're going to let you carve out a few hours a day to solve these problems that don't help our company, but they help solve nonprofit and civic problems within our city. That's amazing. That's carving out space. That's allowing ideas to turn into action. That's the kind of thing we can all do. And sometimes it's just being a good friend. Sometimes it's just being the person who says, I like this idea. Here's what you should do. Here's how you can make it happen. At the end of the day, if none of these other things, if you're not in a position to give people that, that go ahead through money or connections or time, if nothing else, you can double dog dare them because I know that works. Thank you. <laughs>